Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Zero from Info, and we are on the test server. Yeah, we got so incredibly much stuff going on this patch. Holy crap! Let me start off by saying I hope you have your snacks and your drinks, because this is gonna be a long video. I'm going to do some in-depth tank uh, reviews, looks at in a different video. I'm just not gonna have the time. Let me quickly show, uh, show you guys some of the changes. These are all the tanks that are either new or got something updated to them, and this isn't even all of them yet. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that's the entire list. <laughs> oh boy, we are gonna be busy, guys. Um, I'm trying to, I'm gonna try to go through them rather quickly and then take a look at individual tanks at a later point, at least the ones that are interesting. So. Holy shit, let's get started. This is the light tank patch. It has to be said, there are buttloads of new light tanks coming out. There are buttloads of changes to current light tanks. Yeah, hold on. Nothing really great. Don't get your hopes up, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, for the Americans, let's actually set this to USA. We have the Chaffee that has changed. We have a T-37, a Bulldog Walker. Walker Bulldog. I know. <laughs> Got it almost right. Uh, M41 Walker Bulldog. There we go. A T-49, not the one we all know and love. We'll get to that in a second. M3 Lee has changed. T-49 used to be at least a T-49. is now the T-67 with a change. And we got the changes to the Hellcat, which we'll get to at a later point. So, we got three new light tanks, and the Chaffee has changed. Again, we'll get into a little bit more depth in a bit. For Germany, we have the very long-awaited... Oh god, how the hell are we going to pronounce his name? <laughs> um, the Spa Panzer? Are you 251? Uh, Spa? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. Spa Panzer? Something like that. I don't know. Um, the 251. Interesting note, it doesn't get a turret upgrade. It doesn't get a gun upgrade. Its research path is really short. You get an engine. Let's actually put that on. You get some tracks. And you get a radio upgrade. That is it. Well, you go through two engines. But, wow, that's new. But it gets a pretty damn decent gun. Take a look at that. Aim time, pretty good. Accuracy, yeah, okay. 190 pen, pretty good. Not, you know, overly awesome, but pretty good. And a rate of fire of almost 10. That's That sounds like a very interesting tank. Um, yeah, it looks pretty weird. Like somebody sat down on the turret and made it... <laughs> Front profile is almost ELC-like. It's really weird. Anyways, like I said, not too much in-depth about any one tank. And um, the Russians. Let's get to the Russians. Lots of changes here, but we'll get to that in a bit. We have the LTTB with the holy balls kind of gun on it. What the hell are you trying to compensate for? Sheesh! Um, <laughs> weird looking tank. Seems to be on the chassis of the T-34. Take a look here. Uh, it's actually not the same chassis. Looks like it. No, actually the sides are different. Hmm. Um, anyways, yeah, weird ass looking tank. Turret is, I don't know, a bit strange, but that gun. Turret feels a bit long for a Russian, uh. Normally they're shorter. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that gun. And then we have the T 54 Lightweight. This looks like a very interesting tank. It's basically a T 54, just less armor. That's what it comes down to. Very maneuverable, very good traverse speed. But again, we'll get to that later. So, maps. Moravenka has changed. Let's actually take a quick look here. Um, we'll get to the interface as well. Let's do a team training. See if we can see it in here. Uh, create a room. And let me scroll down. Moravenka. So, the changes. The forest has been completely changed. The map boundaries used to be like around here-ish. They have moved out, so the map is slightly bigger. Um, I think it's like 10 meters on every side or something. So it's not much, but it's a little bit bigger. Forest has changed. This 
camping hill here is gone, has been flattened out. You do have a little bit of dents in the terrain here, here, and here. There are some little hills in the forest now, a road leading through it, and the bushes and trees have been greatly reduced. This sign has been sort of flattened out. This hill in the corner has been, I do believe, mostly removed. But again, we'll take a look at this at a later point. Um, don't know when, but hopefully tomorrow I'll have a video out on Moravenka. We'll see. And, yeah, the center town, I think they've added some buildings and some roads leading through them. Very interesting changes. Um, I'm going to be very happy if they remove this hill, because it was ridiculously OP. If you got a good scout in there, you could almost not win this side anymore. It was that ridiculously OP. If you had a good player up in those hills, you lost this corner of the map, this side. It was so stupid. If you didn't have artillery to dig them out, or artillery just ignored them, then yeah, good luck. Anyways, the bases have moved into the center, so neither side has any advantages to either side, because everybody can get there at the same rate. So, very good changes there, very happy with it, but, again, we'll take a look at that in a separate video. Okay, changes to vehicles. The Chaffee has changed, completely rebalanced, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. KV-1S has been split up into a Tier 5 and a Tier 6. Little note on that, I was wrong. Yep, I was wrong. You... wait, did I still leave this open? Uh, exit. No. Um, you do not get the tier 5 tank if you had the KV-1S previously. They have decided to not give you the other tank, which is quite a bit of a bummer. So if you have the KV-1S, you're going to get a KV-85 instead of a KV-1S. As you can see here. So, yeah, I'm kind of sad about that. You don't get the tier 5, which is lame. Really lame. I was hoping for that. I actually bought this stupid thing back for that reason. Yeah, I'm one of the people that doesn't like the KV-1S, but anyways, um, yeah, it's been changed up quite a bit. Again, we'll take a look at that in a second. Let's just briefly go over everything. Um, of course, they've added the KV-85, and the KV-1S is now a Tier 5, so the Tier 6 became a new tank, but it's pretty much the old KV-1S with some reduced stats is what it comes down to. And the old KV-1S is now sort of like an upgraded KV-1. Kill or take. Well, a different gun, I think. So is this gun going to KV-1 as well? Nope. It's the uh, T-150 and the KV-3's gun. Just slightly reduced stats. Um, yeah, 0.42 accuracy, 2.5 second in time. Not great penetration, but for its tier, it's actually pretty good penetration for a tier 5. So, this might actually be quite a good tier 5, by the looks of it. So, let's go on. The M46 Patton got enhanced suspension module added. Woohoo! I think. The PZ SFL tier, uh, PZ SFL 5, the tier 7 German tank destroyer, got renamed to the Sturer Emil. Let's take a quick look in the tech tree. In Germany, 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 we're already in Germany. It is here. It's now called the Sturer Emil. Yay. The maximum battle level for the M6A2E1 has changed. Um, that is the American, and it's a premium that you can't get over here. It's a tier six premium. It kind of looks like a mutated M6. Um, yeah. So that one, I guess, now doesn't see tier eight anymore because it's got its battle tier reduced by one. So I'm guessing that one only sees tier seven and six now. That's good if you own one. And now for one of the changes to pretty much all the light tanks. All light tanks, tier 5 yeah, five to 8, have increased suspension durability. So you're not going to track yourself as fast if you get hit in the tracks. Or if you jump over a hill. <laughs> That's good to know. Okay, now let's dive into some of the more interesting bits. The Dagged Panther. Let's go to Germany. And we're in Germany. Jack Panther. Oh, by the way, look at this. Look at the tracks over here in Jack Panther. <laughs> Sorry, the small things that amuse me. Got an HD defined model, and we can check that. Yep, rifling in a barrel. Mud flaps here are dented. Tracks, of course, looking good. The wheels actually being round. Now we can't zoom in anymore, so I can't show you any closer than this, but. Um, uh, no, not quite yet. Go away. 
in a bit. We're gonna hopefully take a look at the map in a bit together, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, HD fine model. Uh, this is, yeah, not the upgraded version. I um, uh, just got it stock just to show you guys. So yeah, HD fine, looking nice. The VK3601H got its repair costs reduced. Good, because that thing was a bit expensive to fix. Let's head over to the British side of things. Of course, the tier 10 medium has not been replaced. That's going to be near the end of the year or next year, so don't worry about that. Now, this thing got nerfed into the ground. Woohoo! It basically got its suspension nerfed. Um, it's... What do you mean? Um, 22 degrees. Hold on. Oh wait, it's traverse speed. Okay. Yeah, what? What? I'm looking at the stats here, and I'm looking at the patch notes, and the patch notes say traverse speed for the FV 304 suspension changed from 22 to 20. But it still says 22 here. What does it say on the truck itself? 22. What? So, there's something wrong there. Have the right tank, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Hmm. That's weird. Anyways. Um. Hmm. That's really strange. Oh wait, 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 wait! I'm looking at the wrong tracks. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one went from 22 to 20. There we go. And the upgrade it went from 24 to 22. That's right. Okay. No, it's correct. Okay. <laughs> I got it all figured out. So basically what they did to this tank is they changed a lot of soft stats. So traverse speed is one of, well, that's, I guess not really a soft stat, but that changed a little bit, so it turned a little bit slower. They changed the ground passability on it, so ground resistance, so it's a little bit slower to accelerate and to turn. And um, they basically changed some of the gun stats, so the reload time and that sort of stuff. Let's take a quick look here. The rate of fire from 4.4 and it used to be 4.8 I think give or take um, so basically just all the stats so the aim time went up a bit the dispersion went up a bit the dispersion after you fire a shot went up a bit um, that sort of stuff and hold on what we, no. um, I think she wants to say hi to YouTubes. Oh, and chat doesn't seem to be working. Nice! Chat is stuck. Awesome. <laughs> well done. I can't even get out of the contact list now. Nice. Oh, there we go. You can close it like that. And... Yeah, hmm. The chat seems to be gone. Wow. <laughs> okay, chat seems to be broken. <laughs> Well done. Well, we found a bug. Anyways, let's continue. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically what they did to the uh, BERT, as some people like to call it. They basically nerfed it so that it's not as fast and it can't really brawl with light tanks anymore because it was just ridiculous, this thing. Everybody kept saying, yeah, but it has a range handicap. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you can be across the map in two seconds flat and you're invisible as hell. It, the range had no was no limiting factor on this tank whatsoever, so that whole point was just completely invalid. Yeah, but it has no range. It doesn't matter. And hopefully now it won't be able to chain track people, because that was another ridiculous thing. The reload and accuracy were so fast and accurate that it could just freaking chain track people. And it really shouldn't be able to do that, to be honest. That's just stupid. Anyways, let's move on to the very painful subject to probably a lot of people. USA, the Hellcats. Now first off, let me start off with what the hell happened to the tracks. That's a little bit too much slack on tracks there. I don't think that will run very well if it's that loose. Look at all this. It's just gonna come clean off when this thing starts driving. <laughs> so I'm thinking they need to fix that. That seems to be a little bit too much slack. Can we make this one jiggle as well? Yep. <laughs> Anyways, the Hellcats. Yeah. This is going to be painful for some people that love this tank, but to be honest, this thing had too much of everything going for it. I mean, let's be honest. It was one of the fastest. It could out 
drive scouts, it could out scout scouts, it could out shoot scouts, and pretty much everything else. Yeah, it was a bit OP. So let's take a quick look. Again, we're not gonna go through this, you know, in too much detail because it's just a nerf. I know you guys, you know, find this important, but we'll go through it. We have so much to go through. Anyways, um. Dispersion on the move changed, suspension, um, you know, soft terrain and that sort of stuff, terrain resistance changed, um, all in the negative, obviously. Um, that's the majority, really, of the things. The traverse speed, uh, the re excuse me, reverse speed, so the backing up speed, went from 20 kilometers an hour to 12, so it can back out a lot slower, almost half the speed now. And pretty much the reload has been adjusted of the gun. And there we go, rate of fire is now 7 with the 90mm. And it used to be 6.5 ish, give or take. It's a bit hard to see because I have a shitty crew here. Um, but yeah, it's been changed. Uh, let's take a look. Reload time from 8 seconds to 8.5 seconds. Oh, yeah, of course, it's rate of fire, not reload time. Derp. So yeah, um, half a second longer. Aim time, or not aim time, reload time, wow, I'm off today. <laughs> Damn. So, you're basically just not as quickly in acceleration and getting out of places, and you are going to spend a little bit more time aiming your shots with the new dispersal and that sort of stuff. So, you're going to have to play it a little bit more like a TD. It's still fast enough to get to the good positions, because in a straight line, your acceleration is the only thing that's been affected, really. Because his top speed is still the same. So, those are changes to the T. Um, uh, yeah, blah, T? No, it's a Hellcat, you dumbass. Hellcat! <laughs> Sorry, so many tanks. Ay, yeah, yeah, and I'm trying to go through these quickly, guys, but there's so, so much. Chaffee, I'm not gonna go into much detail again, because this thing has just been rebalanced for a tier 5, normal tier 5, I should say. So we have it in HD, as you can see. We got the nice weathering on the armor here, on the lines, you know, things that normally get scuffled and stuff. We've lost the ridiculously big turret, as you can see. We just have the M24 turret now, and not the big one. The big one is on the tier six. There we go. There's the chaffy turret. This is basically the chaffy that you know we had, and a lot of people seem to love. So this thing will no longer see tier 10, it's a tier 5, so... Uh, 6, 7, 8, probably? Tier 8? 9? 8. I think probably tier 8. My max. Not sure about that. I'll get back to that, probably, if I don't forget. Yeah, basically a lot of changes. Um, I'm really not going to go over them. It's been rebalanced for its tier and the tiers it goes into. So, one big thing to note, though is the experience required to get this thing is now only 12.4k rather than the 50 or 60k it used to be. So it's a lot easier to get, a lot less experience required, so that's a good thing. Oh, and of course because it's been ra rebalanced for its tier, it doesn't get the same gun anymore. You're gonna have to do with this gun, which is not great on penetration to be honest. It's pretty poor. It's only a tier 5 though, but still that's pretty poor penetration, but still a pretty decent rate of fire, reasonably accurate, and a pretty decent, or actually pretty good aim time. So you're just gonna have to flank around, it's more of a flanker. It's got compensated with speed by the way, it does go 77.2 now, and it does get a 460 horsepower engine, can you see that? Mm, specific power 26, so that's pretty good, that's pretty good. If we take a look over here, 21, 23, 24, nah, 14, um, yeah, and I'm 3D. The M5 Stewart, let's switch to that thing real quick, I'm really not going to spend time on this thing. It got an HD model, well, who cares, it's a piece of crap. <laughs> Sorry, I really hated this thing. It got a whole buttload of things changed. It lost the derp gun, the howitzer, instead it got a auto-firing... Uh, 37 millimeter. I think this thing got buffed slightly. Uh, speed went up from 58 to 64. View range went up by 10 meters. Dispersion um, got a little bit better. Uh, capacity changed. How much shells it can have. Dispersion on turret reverse. 
increased by 20%, so that's worse. And it got this gun, the auto uh, auto gun here. And the 20mm Hispano got removed. Traverse speed of the turret went from 40 degrees to 44, so the turret goes a little bit faster. View range in the M5A1 turret. M5A1 turret actually got reduced, because, you know, why would you actually have view range on a stupid scout? Um, from 370 to 360, like I said, the howitzer removed, and the durability of this M5 turret. So that's the stock turret, uh, God knows why. Um, went from 290 HP to 320 HP, so it has a little bit more HP when it starts off stock, so that's good, I guess. T-18, uh, I don't have it in my list here, it's, yeah, like I said, there's so many tanks. T-18 got nerfed, it was very necessary, the thing was retardedly OP for its tier, so, pretty much the suspension got nerfed, so its acceleration, that sort of stuff, turning, all that got addressed. Top reverse speed went from 8 kilometers to 6, so it can back out a lot slower. Reload time of the howitzer from 4.8 seconds to 5.2, so the gun got nerfed. The gun dispersion got nerfed on the howitzer. The QF 2 pounder Mark 9 gun um, for the final. Wait, for the turret? It doesn't even have a turret. <laughs> the T 18 T 47 turret. Um, anyways, the reload time for the other gun went from 2.1 to 2.5 seconds. Yeah, basically it just got nerfed all around. <laughs> uh, T57 got nerfed. Uh, I know a lot of people are not going to be happy with that. Dispersion on the move went up by 25%. Dispersion on hull traverse went up by 25%. Aiming time went up from 2.7 to 2.9 seconds. Dispersion on turret traverse from on 122mm gun went up by 29%. So basically, if you do anything with the tank, your dispersion is going to be worse than it was before, and you're going to spend a longer time aiming. That's a good change. Um, they basically want to change the T57 more into a close-range brawler, and the French AMX 50B into a more semi-longer-range sniper. That's kind of what they moved these two tanks into. T-57, of course, is a devastating tank with that reload that it has, so it needed some accuracy balance changes, so that's good. T-69, they haven't really changed anything other than the cost of the gun. The 76mm gun goes from 63,000 credits to 73,000. So if you still have one laying around, keep it, sell it after your uh, after 9.3 comes out and you'll make a little bit more money. Same, of course, goes for the T-71 because it's the same gun. T-92, the artillery got buffed a little bit, basically suspension uh, got changed, so it's a little bit quicker on turning and acceleration, and the gun dispersal was reduced by 3%, I don't know why, but yeah. M3 Lee has an HD model, well, seriously, who gives a flying <laughs> because it's an M3 Lee, so screw it, so, yes, six, oh, 63, 1, 2, 3. What did I miss? What? Why can I not sell it? Oh, I've already sold too many tanks today. Dang it! Um, darn, I can't sell it. <laughs> yeah, who cares? Okay, <sighs> we're like halfway done, guys. There is so freaking much in here. The IS, its stock gun, got buffed. The 100 millimeter D1 uh, D10T gun. Pretty much got buffed to be in long, uh, to be in the lines of what the Chinese version has. Ah, let's quickly let's go into the detectory here. Let's quickly grab the gun. The is 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 is. So it's this 100 millimeter, and let's compare it to the Chinese counterpart here. Uh, that one. But of course, on the Chinese, it's the stock gun, the 100mm, so that's, you know, one of the things. So pretty much, I'm suspecting, yeah, they pretty much brought it in line, or even better than the uh, Chinese. The Chinese used to be better, so they actually buffed it quite a bit. Aim time was 2.9 seconds, now 2.7, so it was equal to that, it's now better. Basically, it was this gun. Um, I think it was actually exact same stats, so here you can see the differences. <laughs> it was it, it became this. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> well, that was easy. Okay, let's close this shit. And I can't even close these things with escape anymore. Awesome. Yeah, that chat fucked something up, guys. <laughs> be aware, the chat seems to be broken. So. 
Yeah. Uh, um, where did we go? Okay, yeah, right. I guess, okay, I issue 152, so let's head over to... Well, actually, let's just stay here for a bit, and let's go through all the new scouts. At tier 6, we have the T-37. Let's take a look at the research tree here real quick. Has a choice between two top guns. It's up to you which one you want. We have an auto-loading version and a non-auto-loading version. Pretty much the same gun. One gets more penetration, the other one obviously gets a bit more DPM. Because you can just fire, you know, entire shells at people, clips. Um, shells in the magazine is five, so you get five shots. So, it's just your choice. Kind of like the um, uh, Chiri. It's whichever you prefer. Autoloader or non-autoloader. This is the autoloader, this is the non-autoloader, so it's an off-branch gun. However, you do get it on the next tank as well. So, this gun is actually for just this tank. This gun is... Oh, also on just this tank. That's strange. I thought it was the same gun. Uh, I guess I was wrong. Okay. Hmm. I guess not. So, this one gets pretty much the same setup, same type of gun, just an autoloader and a non-autoloader version. I'm guessing this one gets 175 pen, 175, okay, here they're pretty much the same gun. 1.9 seconds, 2.1, yeah, just an autoloading version with slightly different stats. 175 pen for a tier 7, that's not bad. Um, this looks to be a very good scout. Gets a really funky turret. So let's actually go oh, back to the garage. Let's take a look at the Chaffee, this is what it looks now, T-37, basically sort of looks like a Chaffee, and it pretty much is. Speed, 66, pretty good, traverse speed, 48, very maneuverable, armor non-existent, rate of fire of 18.18, .18, pretty good, that's with the non-auto loading, as you can see. 44 turret traverse, pretty good, 390 rear range, pretty good. The Walker Bulldog, I was going to say Bullfrog, but it's a Bulldog. Uh, a funky looking turret, I kind of like that. I like the T49 even more, but we'll get to that in a second. Speed limit 72, 56 traverse speed. This thing turned on a dime and it's bloody fast. Good engine, the uh, specific power is 23, it's a bit of a heavier tank, it's 23 tons versus 23? Oh, oh okay, the way the same. Okay, gets a slightly better engine. Again, armor non-existent, rate of fire 17, still pretty good. Turret verse a 50, this thing can circle like nobody's business. This is going to be a flanking tank, for sure. I mean, it has a good view range as well, let's be honest, 400. So it can definitely be passive scout, but this thing can outmaneuver pretty much anything in the game. It, it, this is going to be an awesome scout. I mean, that's reverse speed, plus turret reverse, plus its speed... Pretty good engine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this thing, put some off-road driving on it, and nobody can keep up with you, and nobody can outturn you. Um, and some clutch brake. Oh my god, can you imagine this thing with clutch braking and uh, uh, the ground resistance uh, skill? I forgot what it's called. There's a driver here. Uh, off-road king, I think. Yeah, off-road driving. That one. Yeah, I think king because it has a crown there. Off-road driving. Get okay, that one. And get that one, and then smooth ride, and Jesus Christ, this thing is going to be insane. <laughs> I, I, I'm really thinking about going down this line now, um, but mainly because of this. <laughs> that is a 152 freaking millimeter derp gun on a tier 8 scout. <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> Oh my god, the fun you can have with this thing. I mean, the reload is, of course, awful. 2.61 rate of fire. Penetration is not good. But, holy friggin' balls, guys. <laughs> Dispersion, 0. 0.6. Pretty bad. Aim time, 3.6. This thing can miss at point blank. Let's take a look at the ammo real quick. We have two credit ammos. We have a high explosive anti tank heat ammo for credits. As you can see, these are just credits, not gold. We have a high explosive, special high explosive. This one probably has a, yeah, burst radius of 5.11. This one probably has none. Yep, no explosive radius. 
and this one has a 3.66 explosive radius. So I would probably say that a ammo loadout of this would not be a bad idea because this one doesn't have a explosive radius but it does have way better penetration of 114 to 190 versus 75 to 95 so if you want to pen or need to pen this one can actually pen if you need to blast people a bit this one or of course a premium but yeah come on you don't even need premium just go with these two you're gonna have butt loads of fun so yeah this thing you get a normal gun on it as well but <laughs> Who the hell is going to use a normal gun where you can have 150 millimeters of derp in your face? <laughs> oh man, this thing is going to annihilate things on the battlefield. Humiliate them. Shoot them. 150... This is like an ISU-152 popping up behind you going, Hello! <laughs> up your ass! <laughs> and then be gone within a second. Oh man. Speed, good. Reverse speed, pretty good. Torrent reverse, pretty damn good. Fury rage, good. This is going to be insane. 152 millimeters of derp right at your doorstep and gone within a second. <laughs> oh, man. T-49 got renamed to T-67. Top turret got its hatch removed. It's now an open top turret. One thing that really disappoints me is the view range did not get upgraded on this turret. 370 on the stock turret, 350 on the upgraded turret. It's an open top turret, it should get better view range. The previous nerf to the view range was because you went from open top to close top. This makes no sense that an open top has less view range than the previous open top. I hope this is a bug and I hope it gets fixed because this is pretty stupid if you ask me. We get all the drawbacks of an open top but none of the benefits. Uh, that's just wrong. So I think that was it for the American tanks. Let's head over to the Russian side. We have the ISU-152. It's now in HD. Yeah, let's check for the rifling. <laughs> kind of too close. Yep, we have rifling. It's HD. You can see the tracks look nice. Not as much weathering on this thing. Uh, there's a bit of denting on that one. Um, kind of expected some more denting on the uh, mud flaps and stuff. This one looks a bit too clean for an HD model. There's like no scuff marks on the... Uh, well, there's the scratches, but no metal showing on like, the corners and stuff. Huh. That's a bit strange. Okay, well, there you have it. It's an HD. Okay, now we get to the KV-1, KV-1S, KV-85, and all that crap. Uh, KV-1 reduced the cost of the KV-1S because it went from a tier 6 to a tier 5 that you have to research, so let's take a quick look at the tech tree. KV-1, as you can see, you can now research the KV-1S for 10.6k rather than the 23k that was before. KV-1S got branched up into two tanks, the KV-85 and the KV-1S. The KV-1S is now a tier 5 tank rather than tier 6, and the KV-85 is now a tier 6. Sadly, we do not get both tanks. Like I said before, if you had the KV-1S, you don't get the Tier 5 KV-1S for free. Damn it. I really was hoping we would. And I'm sorry if I made you guys buy the tank, because I really thought that they were going to do that. They have in the past. Um, and I bought it myself as well, so that kind of stinks. So sorry if you bought that on my... Uh, but I always issue a warning that I cannot guarantee that they will. <laughs> so, don't look at me. Anyways... Let's take a look at the KV-1S here. You get an 85mm gun, 100 and... Ah, I was going to say 129. 119 penetration, 160 pen, pretty good gun for a tier 5. Um, we looked at this briefly before. It's a KV-3 and T-150 gun, pretty damn good gun for a tier 5. And that would actually be a really good tier 5. You can also get that stupid howitzer shit gun, but yeah, just don't. Armor-wise, take a quick look. Let's actually grab a KV-1 to compare. Pretty much the same armor, slightly worse turret armor as the KV-1. Same hull armor on the front, sides are a bit weaker and the back is a bit weaker, but you know, it's pretty much the same tank. Rate of fire is a bit less, but you do get a better gun out of it, so yeah. Um, overall, seems like a pretty good tier 5. Just not overpowered, but a pretty good tier 5. 
KV85, well, we got some choices here for guns. You get a 100mm if you choose to use it. It's a special gun just for this tank. You can also go with 122. This is pretty much the standard 122mm. 175 pen, 390 damage. Dispersal and aim time are horrendous. The accuracy or the rate of fire is pretty bad. Now, looking at this gun, this might not be a bad gun. I know it's not the derp gun we all know and hate to receive, but this might actually work pretty damn well at tier 6. Pretty good rate of fire. 170 pen is still pretty damn good at tier 6. 250 damage. It's not 390, but you do get way more accuracy, better aim time. It's a pretty good gun. This is pretty much what you get on the KV... Um, the KV... The uh, IS-2. Um, not quite, but that's kind of the gun, that, how it performs from the looks of it. So... That might not be a bad choice at all. Again, I'll look at this tank in a bit more detail in a different video. Okay, whew. We're getting there, guys, but there's so much crap. The Object 430, that's the tier... Was that a tier 9? I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, it's a tier 10. I always get confused with these because this is the uh, version 2. And this is the version 1. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so confusing. Anyways, the Object 430... It got its gun reload time changed from 6.9 to 6.4 seconds, so that's a buff. Dispersion on turret traverse uh, got reduced by 25%, so if you traverse your turrets, you're going to get a little bit more accuracy than you did before. Or rather, you lose a little bit less accuracy than you did before. And it, that's on the 100mm gun, and also on the 100mm gun, the dispersion changed from 0.35... Uh, from 0.35 to 0.38. So it actually got a little bit less accurate. Let's take a look. Got a little bit less accurate, 0.38 it used to be 0.35, so a little bit less accuracy, but you got a little bit more accuracy when you're turning your turret, so it sort of balances each other out. Um, just when you're sniping, you have a little bit less accuracy, but you have a better rate of fire in, in return and better uh, or less dispersion on turret traverse. So that's not a bad trade off. <sighs> I need some coffee. Hey, look what I got here. Hmm. It's actually been getting cold since I've been doing this video, dang it. So I'm gonna drink some coffee while I'm talking to you guys. Uh, I need to put it down. I need to grab my mouse. T34 got HD defined. Let's check for the rifling. We can't see rifling because this thing doesn't seem to. Oh no, there we go. It has rifling. <laughs> Gotta check for that rifling. The tracks look. Ooh, that's pretty funky. Tracks look good. Uh, this one, I have to say, didn't look too bad before. Um, they already did some things to it, so I see a problem with the model. You see that? It's very hard to see. Look at this. You see this here? That's a cable. That's supposed to be flat against the tank. I don't know what that is. You see it? It comes out of that thing. If anybody knows what that thing is and what's... Is that an antenna, maybe? Maybe it's antenna. It goes all the way to the back, though. It's really hard to see that thing. It might be its antenna. I think it stops like over here. It's probably yeah. It's... Damn it! <laughs> it stops over here. It must be its antenna. Okay. Never mind. It's supposed to be loose like that then. I've never seen that before. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it never was on there until it was HD. So yeah, that's a T34. The IS-7 has been HD-ified. Oh, look, the tracks to the bouncy thing. Let's take a look at that again. Um, yeah, got HD-ified. Damn. Must be a diesel engine. Let's take a look. Is it? Um, gentle fire. Doesn't say. I don't think it is. Hmm. Uh, wait. Can't we tell with... Nope, nope, no, 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 not that. Nah, actually, no, wait, yes, no. I'm confused. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. The fuel tanks, it's, no, must be a fuel tank then. Hmm, because diesel wouldn't, yeah, hmm, diesel wouldn't explode. Um, I guess it is a fuel tank. That's really dirty. They need some filters on that. Sheesh. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's the fight. Looks good. Lots of rust on it and scratches and wear and tear and but yeah it looks pretty damn good okay 
<laughs> We're getting there, guys. I know this is a long video. I'm sorry. There's just so much. This is one of the biggest patches in a very long time. Um, we already took a brief look at this thing. It does not get a turret upgrade. It does not get a gun upgrade, but it gets a pretty damn good gun. Let's take a look at the stats. Top speed 80. This thing is going to be a speed demon. Let's see. Specific power 24.59. It's not the best in acceleration, but still pretty damn good. Don't expect to ever bounce anything on this thing because its armor is horrendously bad, but 80 top speed, 44 turret traverse, 44 traverse speed. This thing is lightning fast and gets a very dangerous gun. That gun looks really good, to be honest. So, looks like a very fun tank that I might have to grind out eventually. I'm going to go into the light tanks a bit more because I do enjoy them and there's some really good things and changes coming to them. So, yeah, this, this thing looks like a beast. Again, I haven't tried it out yet, but... HD fight model, already showed you that. Um, one big ass thing. Big thing. The German E100. Jags Panzer E100. Mouse VK7201K. Waffentrager Alpha E100. Jack Tiger E50. E75. VK4502P. Aust B. The Waffentrager Alpha PZ4. 8.8 centimeter pack 43 jack tiger jack panther 2 lower panther 2 tiger 2 and the tiger 1 will no longer be set on fire when hit in the transmission guys the german barbecue is over getting shot in the frontal transmission no longer will get you instantly lit on fire this has also been changed for the object 6 uh 263 the t28 on the american side the Japanese Type 61 and STA-1, and the British FV-215B-183. These tanks will no longer get set on fire if you hit the transmission. From what, it, what I've seen, it will only do engine damage. So you still get engine damage, but you know your transmission is essentially an extension of the engine, so that makes sense. So it will no longer kill your engine, it will no longer set you on fire, it will just damage your engine. Um, I'm very happy with that change because it made no sense that you actually got laid on fire from your transmission. So, yeah, very good, good change. And it only goes for the tanks I just listed, so other tanks might still have this issue. I don't know, but, yeah. Durability of the suspension increased for pretty much all light tanks. The Russian MT-25, the German VK-1602... Is it a VK-1602 Leopard? Huh, okay, well, the Leopard... 2801, the Awful Panther, the Chaffee, the T21, the T71, the Chinese 5916, WZ131, 132, and a Type 64, ELC 12T, uh, 1375, and a 1390. I'll get better suspension, so that's good. <sighs> We're getting there, guys. We're almost through it. I'm going to take another sip of coffee. <laughs> I really hope you guys had your own um, snacks and drinks. We're getting there. Okay. Um, awards from the Battle Hero category can now be obtained by multiple players. This is good news. This is one thing that bothered me. If you had a good game and you did not get a Battle Hero medal because somebody else did nothing but did enough to get a medal, you wouldn't get your Courageous Resistance. Because somebody else has got that stupid medal and you didn't, even though you got like, you know, five kills, um, got a thousand uh, bounce damage, you know, blocked by armor, but not enough to get steel wall and not enough to get top gun, you wouldn't actually get a um, Battlefield Hero medal, ergo you wouldn't get a Courageous Resistance, ergo you got screwed over. That has been fixed now. They also added a set of easily obtainable awards, so let's take a look at the service record. Oh man, that chat really screwed us up. You see that? That is a massive bug, guys. <laughs> well, we found a bug on air. I can't even see the medals. <laughs> I'm not going to restart my client, guys, because this will take forever. It was a waiting time of 60,000 people in front of me. Um, I think they might be in here. No. Wait, is it? Counter battery fire, no. Um, epic. No. Stage. Commemorative. Group. Is it in here then? No. It must be at the top then. Yeah, Battlefield Heroes. Okay. Um. Would you. No. I don't see him. 
I don't know where they've added these medals, but I don't see them. Anyways, they are um, Showproof, Battle Buddy, Spotter, Fire for Effect, Fighter, Duelist, Demolition Expert. Oh, that sounds nice. Um, arsonist. <laughs> I guess if you like multiple people on fire, set like two fires, you get arsonist. That's cool. Bruiser, Hand of God. That's probably an artillery one. And Eye for an Eye. If you maybe kill the person that kills you or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so with those added medals. Wait, is this one? That looks new. Spotter. Is that one? Yeah, that's a new one. Okay, so they are in here. Okay, let's take a look. Spotter. Spawn enemy vehicle allies cause a thousand damage in one battle. Okay, that's nice for scouts. Um, well, you know what? You can go look through these yourself. Um, the thing is, if these are... Well, no, they're not hero medals. Never mind, my entire point is mute. They are not battlefield hero medals, so you still won't get... Um, courageous resistance even if you get these I wish that these medals would actually give you something like give you um, let's say a thousand credits if you get a medal because you know right now you're just collecting collecting medals for no apparent reason if you get a little bit of an experience bonus or money for it you know that would actually be useful so but nope okay so let's skip that not interesting enough added bonus to experience which um, with rewards for non-penetrating and ricochet hits. Yeah, you get bonuses for um, damage blocked by your armor. Now, this is important. Not your turret, your armor. So, they call it a tanking, basically, thing. So, what the hell? This is so screwed up. Let's take a look at... Well, let's take my super purging, for instance. You have, like, your... Um, armor use, like in-game, I can't really show you, I don't have a game, but you know how you bounce shots off your armor itself? Well, those shots will actually count and you'll get experience for it. Now, this seems to be broken because there are games where people get 3,000 base experience because of it. I've seen screenshot on FTR. Um, 3,000 base experience for just block by armor, and the guy did like less than 1,000 damage himself in a tier 10. So, it might need some rebalancing. <laughs> um, shells can now ricochet and hit other tanks. If you ricochet off one, you can even go as far as ricochet and hit yourself in weird-ass occasions if you're right alongside him or something. If you're driving, you're shooting into his side, you keep driving and ricochets back, you can hit yourself with your own shot. Oh my god, I can see such hilarious things happening with this. So yeah, ricochet shells can actually be very dangerous now. Um... Okay, the Mark of Excellence has been screwed down a little bit, the requirements for it. Um, it used to be pretty high, they tweaked it down just a tad. So you need a little bit less to actually get them now. I haven't really been playing much, so I haven't really gotten any uh, Mark of Excellences. I've been jumping over all tanks and not been playing any one tank a lot, so I don't really have anything to show you there. Um, if a vehicle drowns after its track being hit by someone, it will count as a kill for that person, so that's pretty cool. Added penalties for unsportsmanship conduct, unsportsman, unsportslike man's conduct thingy majiggy. <laughs> they worded it a bit wrong. If you are inactive, if you exit the battle before it ends, and if you kill yourself, you actually get penalties now. Woohoo! They're finally dealing with that. HD models for the KV-1 T-34, IS-7, ISU-152, M5 Stewart, M3 Lee, and Jack Panther. I already showed you all of those. They've added new um, cinematical explosions if you shoot things like barrels with fuel, cars, canisters, and munition boxes. So you get a little, you know, fiery explosion. Tier 8 to tank vehicles with transmission in the front are no longer set on fire with the transmission. That's good. Improved effect of tracers on a ricochet. You can actually see them a bit clo you know, clearer now. Um, they've changed some things in some models, some minor discrepancies, some blah blah blah. Not important. Fix that. Not important. They fixed the bug where your resolution would change after quitting your clients. That's good. Um, they fixed an issue with the turret falling through the ground if it was torn off. Okay, good. Shell tracers, not important. Some stronghold fixes. Uh, they fixed a brief rotation in a vehicle when it gets spotted. That's good. They fixed that once a vehicle is spotted, you see its tracks and 
then a moment later you see the vehicle itself so that was good um, they fixed some minor bugs um, they fixed some marks of excellences okay not important fixed an issue with the 122 millimeter AT gun mantlet on the T95 they've reworked sound filters inside the vehicle turrets I don't know what that actually does but they've optimized the playback of sound effects so um, there were some glitches with that in the last couple of patches every time so Hopefully that is fixed now. They reworked the garage as you have been looking at here for a while. Things have changed and moved around quite a bit. You can actually directly create a platoon right here now. And have your chat there. And I don't have a way of closing the platoon window right now. This is awesome. Um, how do I kill this? I can't. Uh, what? Oh, okay, that's not it. Oh, it's here. Can we close it here? Haha, uh -huh. we can minimize it. That works. So, my client is a bit screwed up because of that chat. Um, they definitely need to fix that. Um, yeah, they've basically moved everything around here. They have fixed a couple of things. Fixed some memory leaks in battle. That's always a good thing. Um, they fixed some crashes and hangups in game client. Always good. Performance on game clients on some PC configurations improved. I wish they would specify a little bit more where, what, why. That's actually... No, let's actually put the funniest tank possibly in the game. Where is it? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Let's put that so you can just look at it and laugh. Um, video memory consumption reduced. That's always a good thing. Fix an issue with the player could not complain to an ally um, for idle or bot. Okay, we are through it. I'm going to need to drink some coffee after this, guys. I've been talking for almost an hour. We're going to wrap this up. So, map changes and in detail changes of tanks I'll look at in different videos because we're going to be almost an hour long here. Thank you guys for sticking with me this long if you're still here. Lots of changes, more videos to come, but holy crap, what a patch. This is going to be epic. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.